Bye. In this video, we will solve an example problem, which is a very important problem uh, in the context of transit performance characteristics of a second order system. Actually, this topology is a PD controller topology, okay, so uh, proportional and derivative. We will talk about P, PD, and PID controllers later, but uh, at this point, you should, uh, it's enough to know the fact that this is uh, some sort of a PD control strategy that you can apply uh, in uh, some of the uh, control systems. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we have two interconnected loops, so it is not in a straightforward form. And uh, the requirement uh, given in the problem is this design KP, KD gains such that the maximum overshoot, percentage overshoot, okay, so let's write this percentage maximum overshoot of the system is uh, less than. 4% 32 okay so it can uh, look like a fine number and you will see that the meaning later and the setting time for 2% setting time is less than one second okay so we need to find kp kd such that the system is stable okay the maximum percentage overshoot is uh, less than 0 0.30 4.32 uh, and setting time is less than one per second. And as you can see, there is no constraint of the peak time or the rise time of the system. These are the only two requirements that you need to take into account to solve the problem. Okay, so let's uh, clean this and let's first find the transfer function from input to output, which is the first step uh, in this uh, solution. Okay, so first of all, if we technically uh, simplify this inner loop, we will say that, okay, this G, i of s is equal to okay uh, 1 over s 1 plus kd over s okay that's great and if we solve it we will see that it is equal to i think 1 over s plus kd so this is the inner loop if you find the whole transfer function t of s is equal to kp times okay 1 over s times s plus kd that's great. 1 plus, okay, so kp s plus, s plus kd. Okay, so if we simplify it, we will see that this uh, upper part is equal to kp, and this is equal to s squared plus kd times s plus kp. So as you can see, we obtain a second order transfer function in the standard form such that the numerator is just a constant in the denominator we have a second order expression that's great okay so let's clean everything okay this is the everything we need at this point of this solution okay so let's copy this cut okay sorry for that paste okay that's super great okay now let's start solving the problem okay since it's in the second order form okay we know that we can write this okay sorry for that okay in this case we have a dc gain the scale called kdc doesn't matter omega n square s square plus two psi omega n s plus omega n square okay and we know that we have two poles they can be complex conjugate over that uh, or under that in terms of the response okay let's start with the overshoot okay so overshoot requirement says that mp or p mp is equal to or equal to less than or equal to let's say less than or equal to 0 0.4 not 0 point okay so percentage of 4.32 so in terms of the classical overshoot, uh, if you don't talk about percentage, it's equal to, uh, let's say, 0 0.0432. Okay, we know that. So let's do find the damping ratio that is associated with this number, or let's say, a phi angle. Okay, so we know that mp is equal to e to the power minus pi tangent phi. Okay. And we want this to be equal to or uh, less than or equal to 0 0.0432. So in that respect, we technically want uh, minus pi divided by tangent phi to be less than minus pi. Okay, that's nice because of the exponential. And which means that we want tangent phi to be less than or equal to 1. 
I think that's great. So we've technically found the constraint that satisfies the overshoot requirement, and it only depends on the file. Okay, so let's clean everything. Okay, let's clean this part. Okay, that's great. And let's draw this. Okay, so tangent phi is less than 1. So what is tangent phi? If we have a pole like this, okay, if we have complex conjugate poles, we know that tangent phi less than y requirement. Let's also change the color. Okay, states that this angle is less than 45 degrees because tangent phi is equal to 1 means that it's 45 degrees. So this angle should be equal to or less than or equal to 45 degrees, which means that in order to satisfy the overshoot requirement, our uh, technically pole loca location should be inside this region. Okay, so technically these requirements gives us a constraint and a region uh, such that we can satisfy the overshoot requirement. Okay, it only says that we shouldn't be here or here. Any point in this part is allowed in this perspective. Okay, so that's great. So what we need to do is, before going to KP and KD, we also need to find that constraint that can satisfy the setting time requirement, which will be even easier. Okay, so let's do that. So in that respect, we know that TS2, okay, TS2, to 2% setting time, which is equal to 4 divided by psi omega n, which is equal to 4 divided by sigma, should be less than or equal to 1. In that respect, we know that the sigma, which is the magnitude of the real part, should be greater than 4. Okay, so if I draw it, which is also very simple, you will see that. Okay. So if I draw it on a separate figure, so I find 4, okay, which is sigma, it's the constraint, and my location, pole location, should be greater than or equal to this number. So it puts a constraint on the real part, or negative real part. Okay, so I have two constraints. What I need to do is, in order to find the, allow the region which satisfies both requirements, I need to combine them, which is very easy. I only need to just uh, technically combine of uh, obtain intersection which technically looks like this okay so this is for this is for j okay this is technically equal to minus 4j i need to be here and i need to satisfy the angle requirement in that respect i can find the whole region that can satisfy my requirement is this Whole this region. Okay, as you can see, it's a pretty big region. We have invent many different points that can satisfy this requirement. Okay, so what is next? We computed the region, uh, but in this problem, we just don't want the region. We want the KP and KP values, a, a value. There should be infinite many of them that can satisfy this requirement. What you should do is you should simply uh, select a point in this region and then compute the KP and KP. If you look at the lecture notes, my selected points are here okay this is here this is here such that this is equal to minus 5 plus 4j and this is equal to minus pi minus 4j it's complex conjugate quantities so in that respect, what i should do is i need to compute the denominator desired denominator okay the desired denominator is equal to s minus p1 multiplied with s minus p2 so it's equal to s plus 5 plus 4j s plus 5 minus 4j this is my desired polynomial d star of s is equal to s squared plus 10 s plus 41 so in order to satisfy this pole location my polynomial of the transfer function looks like this which should be equal to also as you can see okay s plus k d times s plus k p so technically k p is equal to 41 KD is equal to, as you can see, then we compute to KB and KD. And as you can see, the problem is not that hard. If you know the formulas, if you know how to operate the formulas, uh, of course, you may need some sort of calculators or some technical guidance to do the exact computations. But the basic idea, as you can see, very simple. Okay, that's good. So uh, the next thing is uh, verifying the overshoot and the setting time. The setting time is very easy since we 
e, selected minus 5. The setting time should be around, okay, e, for, okay, let's look at the formula, if you remember, okay, 4 divided by psi n, okay, 5, so it should be equal to, approximately equal to, of course, it's not exact, 0 0.8 seconds, okay, this is the, like, a theoretic uh, computation of the setting time, okay, if I compute overshoot, okay, so if I put the formula, okay, which is the here, okay, that's great, uh, okay, so where's the formula, I, I lost the formula, okay, that's great, so what is the formula, e to the power minus pi divided by tangent 5, so I'm using minus 5 and 4, I need to compute tangent 5 and overshoot, I think, I'm not sure exactly, it should be equal to around 0 0.02, but you can also verify the exact computation. Okay, so this is the overshoot, this is the theoretical setting time value. Okay, so, but in general, in practice, okay, these uh, formulas, especially setting time, gives you a guidance. If you want to be exact in terms of the real-life simulation or real-life experiment, you need to do simulation because if you remember, some of the computations are approximate. Okay, overshoot is not approximate. Okay, there should be some errors, but not big. But the same thing time computation for second row of the system, even if it's in standard form, is approximate. Okay, so if we uh, perform the simulation, so I had the simulation in the lecture notes, so you can look at that. And if we draw the response, it will look like this. Okay, something like this. Okay, sorry for that. Okay, so there will be a very small overshoot, okay, something like that, okay, so if we look at the overshoot, uh, it will be really very close to 0 0.02, or it is equal to 2%, that's nice, okay, so if you look at the setting time, okay, setting time, 2% setting time, region, uh, I think we will give it around here, and the actual setting time is actually equal to 0.56 seconds. As you can see, the error is pretty big. Okay, so we computed 0.8 seconds, and the actual setting time, if we simulate the system using MATLAB Simulator or any kind of simulation framework, or tool, we will find that it is like 0 0.56 second, I don't know, the error is pretty big. The good thing is, as you can see, we overestimate the setting time, so actual setting time is even better than our approximation. That's also one of the advantages, but the, uh, the important fact about this is these uh, technical formulas in real control experiments or real control designers in your engineering life should be like guidance. Because of the sum of the approximations, uh, the systems being in non-standard form, there will be errors, they can be small or big, it depends. Once you design it, you should verify it using simulation, or uh, it's possible using direct experiments, but in the technically midterms or quizzes, you can use these formulas as like the exact values. Okay, we will talk about their deeper meaning later, uh, but this is a typical uh, good example that you can encounter in a midterm or quiz environment.